It's time for Fort Worth Musical Moments. Join us now as Steve Marquardt takes a look at the music and the artists who made the city's vibrant musical legacy what it is today. And we're off and running on another Fort Worth Musical Moments. Brent Adams here with Steve Marquardt. And Steve, we have got another special show lined up today. I know a lot of people are, are waiting here uh, for this one, and uh, we can't wait to get started here. Yeah, it seems like our guests have, have quite a few followers and fans, rightfully so. And uh, this was one of those things that, you know, we just formally met. I just formally met these two just a couple of days ago when they were coming through Fort Worth. And, we uh, happened to hook up down the good old stockyards area, and uh, what what started out as about an hour long lunch turned into what about three and a half hours, and uh, I think so. It's seemed to have a lot in common with these two. So let's bring them on in. We have uh, Steve Oliver and Nikki Nelson, and uh, my gosh, you know, you guys in, involved in just a little bit of everything, as we said in our preview, and uh, we just barely scratched the surface. So. We, we've got a lot to talk about this morning and a few things to show our viewers. And uh, we might even have a surprise guest pop in here as well. So, oh, wow. Uh, that, yeah. that's, uh, that's news to me. I, I, can't, wait to, that digit, I so. can't wait to be surprised. Excellent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love surprises. Good to see y'all this morning. <laughs> you, Excellent. You guys are on the road, I can tell. Uh, or, uh, you're, hopefully you're not driving, Steve. I'm in a driver's seat, but I've got it in park. We're sitting <laughs> under a shade tree. Because nice. this house out here has no internet service till you get on what little bit of hill we have out here. So we're sitting out in a truck under the shade tree visiting with y'all this morning. Now, which, Pretty good which technology. House, which house is that? Because y'all have several. Well, this <laughs> is a house that I had bought back in January out in Suffer Springs, Texas. And uh, just uh, got it on the market. It's just a house I'm flipping out here and so on the road when we're in this part of the world we just camp out here till it's time to move on you know well that's good you, you should always have Southeast. one place yeah. that has no internet so you can have an excuse to go off the grid uh, that's correct that's, that's well, good you can plan. sure get out of here quick <laughs> you can get off the grid quick here uh, well, conversely, if anybody watched last week's show, uh, just another uh, reason why uh, what we're doing behind the scenes is so important. Yes. Right. Yeah. With the, I explained to y'all about the, the uh, telecommunications part of, of our uh, of our strategy on getting our music out to as many people as possible and, and, uh, and then get as many people connected as possible in the, in the meantime. So we're excited about that. And, uh, and uh love and that we, love that plan yeah so we've all talked a, a lot about all the things we have in common but uh i'll let brent kind of take over because i know uh, uh brent has uh certainly done his homework and is uh, all, was already familiar with you guys and and so we want to talk there's lots to talk about want to talk about where you guys have been where 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 you are today and where where this whole thing's heading and and uh, we're just excited. And I know you got a lot to do. You know, this is Fort Worth musical moments and you, you got to spend a lot of time in Fort Worth so we can talk about that and whatever else comes to mind. Yeah, I love that. Good. That's a good plan. Well, well, I tell you, as we do a, a lot of times, I'm always curious to know, you know, how an artist finds a motivation to take themselves from their hometown uh, to Nashville and, and embark upon a music career. And I know Nikki for you, it was coming from Topaz Lake, Nevada. And uh, for Steve, it was a cotton farm in Alabama. So Nikki, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us a bit about what the defining moment was where you said, hey, I, I think I want to move to Nashville and make a career out of this. Uh oh. When I was about 13 years old, my, well, first of all, I started playing guitar and uh, singing with my daddy's band when I was about 12. And then when I was 13, we made a trip to Nashville and my folks took me to the Grand Ole Opry and I saw uh, Roy Acuff balances fiddle bow on his nose and 
I was just in love with mm. tr true country music, traditional country. And I knew from that trip, I knew as soon as I, I was old enough or, or or if I could sneak out before I was old enough, I was moving to Nashville. Uh, so as so soon as when I, did you... I turned 18, that's what I did. I loaded up my little dots and pickup truck with, you know, a set of towels and a Well, so far, Steve, I like where the story's headed. Yeah, I think we just froze up. I'm not sure. And I will fill in a blank while we're waiting here. After she made it to Nashville, she spent some time working at the Nashville pa Palace. And oh. Guitar and, and uh, some canned food, and I took off. Ooh. I think we just lost it that's the that's the the joy and hazard of being on the road sometimes. we're going to bring in a special guest here while we wait and figure this out hey save us like save like us having some latency issues there <laughs> a, a tiny bit <laughs> yeah they're, they're on the road they're in their truck in east texas with no internet so yeah. they're kind of over yeah. cellular uh, That's a shame because uh, these are very interesting people. And uh, that girl, of course, the lead singer was Highway 101. If you, I don't know if y'all mentioned right. that, but she's an amazing singer, and he is too. I was just out at their place recently, guys. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Steve, we got two Steves here. So, uh, but uh, he's got a beautiful, beautiful farm. And we went out there and shot a video on Braden Ryle, one of our artists. And, uh, uh, Man, he had a gorgeous place out there. Uh, got to got to look at it and talk to him. He's got a nice little studio set up out there, and uh, of course, I got to meet her. And uh, it was just a they're wonderful, wonderful folks. It's a shame we can't have them on here without any issues. But you know, this is what you run into with with TV and cameras and stuff. Anytime you're streaming, you're going to run into this. Right. Yeah. Always challenges. And and the one thing I know about uh, uh, Steve is that he's got a pedigree much like yours and that he has been around Nashville a long time and worked with a lot of legendary artists. Well, absolutely. And uh, he, he and I know a lot of the same people. As a matter of fact, I produced an album on him 25 years ago. How about uh, that? And I thought, I thought he was one of the best singers I had ever heard in my life. He's got this big baritone voice. There they are. We got them back. I hope we can. Uh, I hope we can have some dialogue without interruptions. But I know you guys are out in the middle of nowhere with no Wi-Fi. So, but I was just telling these guys about. Uh, I was uh, privileged to uh, to produce an album on on Steve back many 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 years ago, and he and I have run in the same circles in Nashville for years. We know the same people. Of course, I worked with Vern Gosden, and, and Steve was really good friends with Vern. And Vern used to go out there and. Uh, hang out with them on the, the ranch. And so, uh, and Nikki, I'm a big fan of Nikki. Uh, my, my goodness. So uh, what a, what a great singer she is, but Steve is probably the most underrated vocalist, uh, that I've ever worked with. His, I always thought he should have been a star back then. And I don't know what happened. We just couldn't seem to get it going, but excellent, excellent voice. I agree with that. I am a star. <laughs> no, in my own right right <laughs> yeah. you know a lot of those a lot of those guys back in them days they already they done packed it up and went home you know all right so i've been blessed in a lot of ways still getting to stay and do what i love all right well i tell you let's circle back around while we still got a little bit of decent internet here you know nikki okay. we were talking about your journey take us again with the dots and pickup uh, from yeah. Nevada to uh, to Nashville, Tennessee, and what that looked like. Yeah, well, I jumped in my Datsun pickup and I took off when I was 18. And uh, I lived with my grandpa up uh, in Bee Springs, Kentucky for a couple months and worked at a little restaurant up there and saved up money to get an apartment and moved down to Nashville. 
and just kind of went around setting in with different bands, going to hear different people play and uh, was fortunate to run into, you know, Brent Mace then it Gabe's and just great pickers when they weren't on the, the road, they were playing in different clubs around town and just got to know some people and, and then um, I did some work with a guy named Larry Rogers at Studio 19. And I had actually met him when I was 16 you know, on an, another trip to Nashville and we just stayed in touch. And then when, um, when Paulette Carlson left, I think we've run into this issue again with uh, with uh, the latency yeah. thing, but uh, kinda come. we've kind of lost audio with you, uh, Nikki. Uh, it seems like it. Well, I tell you what. It, in the meantime, it, you know, I, I want to share some of the music with these the guys. Oh, one one. And uh oh, they were looking for a new girl. And Larry Rogers uh, talked to Martha Sharp over at Warner Brothers. She said, I've got a girl I want you to hear. And, and that's how that connection was made. And of course, I had to go, you know, uh, uh, audition. I think we lost well, him. We lost him. So in the meantime, uh, while we uh, <clears throat> while we try to work our way through that, I'm going to play a clip because not only did she do all the great stuff with Highway 101, she has done a lot of, of great uh, solo stuff as well. And this is one I, I wish she was here to be able to uh, talk about it here. Uh, it's called While the Jukebox Gently Weeps. And it is a great traditional country song. So check this out. My second home He was standing In the corner Looking so All alone An old country Jukebox that I had Known for many years Now his lights Were turned off And I could almost See his tears From a nickel to a quarter now a dog or a song they say he's outdated and country music has moved on there was dust on his face but my reflection used to be how I wish I could hear him play B23 Welcome to my world And I'm so lonesome I could cry Hello walls Brought so many Teardrops To my eyes No longer needed He just sits there Fast asleep Watching while my old friend The jukebox Gently we Once the life of the party Now he's living on borrowed time The floor was warm in front of him Where we sang every line 
His neon lights were darkened. There were shadows all around. I'm sure they were there just to hear his last country sound. Well, before they came to get him, I put a dime in his tray. Just one more song, old friends, is what we used to say. I spent my last dollar to hear just one more memory. Now closing my eyes, I feel the happiness that old jukebox is giving me. Welcome to my world. I'm so lonesome I could cry. And hello, all brought so many teardrops to my eyes. No longer needed. He just sits there fast asleep. Now watching while my old friend you box gently weeps. Now watching while my old friend the jukebox gently weeps. Ah, now that's country music right there, Kurt Ryle. Yes, it is. That is the traditional stuff I grew up listening to. Love it. Ah. Uh. Can you guys hear us? I can. Yeah. Okay. Well, I tell you what. Are we better now? <laughs> uh, a, a little bit. Um, what we were talking about doing, if you guys are up for it, uh, uh, if you wouldn't mind coming back um, when you guys get to Wi-Fi so we can do this thing right, uh, I think we may want to do that. Are you good with that? Yeah, that would be fine. Sure. Sure. We 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 changed. I, don't, I think it's going to work now because we moved down to the middle of a cow field <laughs> that has wi-fi <laughs> okay all right well we'll keep i mean it. can you hear us okay now we, we can hear you fine so, uh, so right, relay transmitters on the cattle is what you're saying it might be right as long as we stay close to them that's well, right let's see, let's see if we can uh make this happen and if not we'll just you know we'll probably have y'all on again anyway at some point but sure. uh, i bet. just don't i don't want to I don't want, you know, there's so much to talk about. There's a lot of good things. And, and as frustrating as it is for us, it's even probably more frustrating for our viewers. So we just want to make everything justice here. So you bet. You All bet. right. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> since we're, we're rolling here and everything seems okay for the minute, uh, uh, Nikki, you were telling us uh, kind of how everything came to be uh, with Highway 101. If, if you don't mind, just kind of r run through that story again. How did all that come to be? Sure. One of uh, another trip that I made to Nashville when I was 16, I met Larry Rogers at Studio 19, and he cut a few demo things on me, and and we just stayed in touch until I moved to town when I was 18, and I had been in town for probably close to a year, and Paulette Carlson left Highway 101, and then they were looking for uh, a girl singer to replace her, and Larry Rogers. Uh, took my stuff and uh, mentioned me to Martha Sharp over at Warner Brothers and said, I think this could be the girl. And of course I had to audition with a, you know, a bunch of other ladies. And uh, that's, that's how I got that, that gig. And I was sick, sick. I had strep throat. I went that morning, got a shot in the hip uh. and I thought there's no way that I'm going to get this gig. And, uh, and then the joke for the next, you know, 30 years has been now we have to keep her sick all the time because we like that tone that she had that day. <laughs> who were the girls? Tell them who the girl lineup was. Oh, I don't, I don't remember who all was there, but oh, you don't. no, they didn't put us all in the same room at the same time. Oh, okay. well, well Nikki, I was listening to your, your music and I pulled up some other stuff that you, you did with Highway 101 and, and then when Steve did some duets together and I was trying yeah. to figure sounded like and I, I came up with several people any cross between Tammy Wynette or or maybe uh Reba McIntyre and I thought no nope, she just sounds like Nikki Nelson which is 
supreme compliment because you you definitely want to have your own sound and you've got a, 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 a kind of a unique voice but it's a fabulous voice and uh um, well thank you steve i appreciate that i i appreciate the the comparisons too well, and you were coming into a group that already had won an ACM award for, for group of the year. What was it like to step yeah. into that and, 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 uh, you know, trying to pick up that mantle and carry it forward? Well, it's a good thing that I was really green and really young and, uh, because it was scary, but you know, when you're really young, you're, there's not much you're scared of. So, um, the guys were very supportive. They were wonderful. It was like, having a bunch of big brothers and um i didn't try to sound like paulette i didn't try to emulate her but i always tried to respect the songs the way they were recorded and and but you know just bring my own flavor to it and that seemed to work it didn't work you know not everybody loved it but um i mean 32 years later i'm still doing highway 101 gigs so <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to ask if, if you're still tight with any of those folks. Sure, yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, in September of this year, we'll um, we'll be playing out in Alto, New Alto. Mexico. Steve and I are, too. And uh, so we'll be doing a highway show out there. And we've since the pandemic uh, with highway, we haven't done very much. We've probably done, I don't know, a dozen shows since since the pandemic started. Are y'all playing so it out? Playing at Alto Country Club, is that right? We are. Yeah, yeah, we'll be yeah. there though. Yeah, the we'll first be, first week of September. Yeah, we right. do two dates, just our duo act, and then Highway comes in and we do a show with them, and then we front Daryl Worley. The last show we'll be fronting Daryl Worley. Well, I've got a, or he'll be closing for or us. Or he'll be closing for <laughs> us, rather. I was just there. I uh, had dinner at the Country Club about a week or so ago, and uh, yeah. we have a place right across the way from, from there. And so uh, we'll try to be up there for that. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah. Well, there's such a hunger right now for that 90s country music. There's a big revival. I mean, does that uh, bode well for uh, you guys getting some gigs going into the future? Well, maybe so. We're, uh, I mean, we're coming back around like corduroy pants, right? <laughs> I love it. I hope so. We'll see what happens. New you know, it's, are it's, recording. Are you recording any any new stuff now? Or are you back in the studio? Or? We haven't. The last thing that uh, that we recorded as Highway was a Christmas album, and that's been, I'm going to say, probably maybe eight nine years ago now and currently we don't have any plans to do any recording um so we'll just we'll have to see what happens you know cactus ran off with another redhead <laughs> and uh, so he's now he's married to why know uh oh uh, we're having issues again it looks like oh boy Gone. Yeah. and she was just I getting ready to find a new cow field <laughs> <laughs> The cows moved on them. <laughs> well, that was interesting, ahead. wasn't it? Yep. We had a little freeze up. And then they work all Christmas. Uh oh. You kind of, you guys kind of went away on us there for a while. We lost you again, but uh, that was, uh, I was, that was a very interesting. I was really yep. into what you were saying there. That was a, you know, I, I kind of. I miss Highway 101 new, new stuff. I'd like to hear some new stuff on you guys. I think you ought to try to get those guys back in the studio. It's always fun. It's always a good time when we're in the studio. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it at all. What Maybe I'm the, really, really loving these days is uh, the project that Steve and I have together. Yeah, yeah. tell us about that. Yeah. Tell, tell them all about it. Go ahead and tell you want me to tell them? Sure. Okay. Well, you got the floor. Yeah. Well, we, uh, uh, about two and a half years ago, I guess, we we ran into each other through a mutual friend. And we, same like with Kurt, we, we uh, all ran in the same circles, know all the same people. But Steve and I had never met each other, uh, that we can recall anyway. And um, so I was doing a video for a mutual friend of ours. And we, Steve also produces videos. And we did that out at his home in Columbia. And uh, when we had some downtime, 
during the video shoot, as you will have. Uh, Steve grabbed his guitar and we started singing some old, good old Merle and whoever. And uh, I said, man, we, we sound really good together. We ought to cut something. And he said, well, hell, let's just do a whole album. And so we, about six months later, we had an album. Wow. Yeah. And it's been so fun ever since. For, We've worked can, a lot. I can tell you for a fact, that's going to be amazing because both of you guys are great vocalists. Uh, Steve, I am such a fan. I had I had forgotten how good you were from the 25 years ago when we worked together in the studio. I was out at your place yes. not long ago shooting a video, and uh, you took me into your studio there and played me some stuff, and I was just floored with the quality of your voice. I'm like, how did I drop the ball on that those all those years ago, man? I should have been out there pushing you for a record deal harder than I did. I, I it, it had it's so long ago I don't even remember a lot of it. But uh right, man, right. what a great voice. Well you know I I agree. You know how the story is. It's just it's just it, sometimes it just has to line up and, and if it don't you know it don't but I you know I, I like I said I've I've got to do what I want, wanted to do. Uh, and you know you look back sometimes I don't know if a a big record deal you know how things can fall and and it don't work sometimes then you really get hung up so i was so glad 15 years ago i moved out of, off of music row of course and kind of started doing it my way and then since then it's when everything really started i mean i had a deal with rca they done a an album on me signed me for three years to write for for bmg and you know went through all that and and had a dress code you know everybody had to they was trying to make a star i had a dress code i had to go by through management and all that but after i got out of all that and two or three writing deals and got down there in my own world you know things really started you know and we've said said it a million times when you do it your way and you really know deep down that's the way it needs to be uh, uh you know uh, i feel like that's where they lose a lot of it of not letting you be yourself. And when, as of 15 years ago, I become myself and I didn't care. I didn't even have to go to Nashville no more. And I'm not knocking Nashville, but at the same time I am because I didn't have to go there. So, but since then, when I got down there and started making those, uh, my, 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 my appointments and my stuff, then things started happening. You know, I was riding with Dawn Sears, we wrote a bunch of stuff together and then I got lucky and we got a song cut on the time jumpers, which she was, you know, the part of that band, her husband, Kenny. And then she worked with Vince Guilford last 20 years on the road with him. And we wrote a bunch of stuff and we got that song, got nominated for a Grammy. Well, I know hit songwriters never been, you know, had, didn't even get nominated for a Grammy. So it works in a lot of different fields. But after that, other again it could be it'll come back yeah but after but yeah we're starting to lose you guys again yeah. i'm not Don't sure what's going on are we still there are we still there okay. yes yeah okay are we there now okay. yes okay but uh yeah after but you know after that i just uh like i said uh things start happening and then <sighs> they're walking in front of that that's what's killing me okay i think we're back now safe talking your signal yeah something walk. we had to chase the cow he <laughs> chased the cow but anyway you know, just, that, just uh, you know then I, I started getting yeah started getting uh you know like i said after the time jumpers and the nomination for the grammy was dawn and, you know everything started moving then you know i had a, a cut of course for then me and Vern, we cut some stuff together i've got a few duets that i'm holding on but that me and Vern had and then um but you know i've got a daily and vincent cut i got a ronda vincent cut um we're off the air again wow this is well, crazy. good okay we can hear you. we're back now anyway y'all can hear me now yes okay uh. yeah we uh we got you know like i said got the grammy nominated and then um had you know Vern cuts Vern Gosden and then with uh Daly and Vincent 
Ron DeVinson, uh, you know, T.G. Shepard, Lori Morgan, Bellamy Brothers, Mo Bandy. You know, I've just I, things just started going my way. They're not big cuts, but they're cuts, and that's all that matters. You know, it's it's the satisfying part of it of getting what you want to get done. You know, if I could have backed up 20 years before that, you know, I would have moved on back out about 30 miles south of Nashville. Then things might have been different, but but. <sighs> But, you know, my granddaddy lived to be 102 year old. And at his 100th birthday, I asked Papa, I said, what would you change? He said, not one thing. So I'm going to give that to I wouldn't change one thing. I'm here. I'm blessed. I'm healthy. You know, and at the end of the day, that's what it's about. But uh, but I'm getting to do what I want to do. So I really I wouldn't change nothing anyway. Just let right. it roll and it's going to fold the way it's going to fold, you know. But I'm being, but we're getting to do like me and Nikki with this album that we done when we when we decided to go ahead and do that album, you know it's it's about what we love, and and our fans, you know, and it's funny, of course you got these T-shirts, Cash and June and Johnny and and all these young guys are mentioning that in their songs, you know, that's being played on the radio, wanting to be a June or a Johnny. But at the same time, that's what we do. We do that old traditional stuff like George and Tammy or Merle Haggard and Leona Williams or, or Johnny and June. But, you know, it really works, believe it or not, out here with a younger generation because they think Johnny Cash was cool. They wear his shirt, you know, now. So all of that still works. And when we, we kind of work that crowd, we know if it's an old guy sitting over there, 75 or 80 year old, he's wanting to hear Merle Haggard. We got him covered or fish young uh college kid wants to hear johnny cash in june we got him covered so it really works great for us and we love doing that and we're doing what we love that's the main thing well i tell you what the whole ep chase me around texas is solid country gold tell me about the single here because i want to play it for folks thank you uh, the chase me around texas is that yeah. the one you're gonna play yep yep <clears throat> yeah yeah that's uh, a friend. You co-wrote that one, didn't you? Yes. Friend yep. of it. Yeah. <sighs> I can't remember. I have to look at the liner notes to get yeah. all the details. But <laughs> when we started, uh, when we sat down to write, uh, we knew that Texas, it was right in the beginning of the pandemic. And we uh, we knew Texas, we could go work in Texas. So we kind of wrote a you know, slanted toward Texas kind of album. So uh, this was the first single off of it, Chase Me Around Texas. We're going to let you hear it right now. Well, I run from love. I run from hurt. I run from guys in cowboy shirts. But somehow your boots slip right in. With your Texas swing and two-step style For a moment you drove me wild Then I took one step back and said not again Chase me around Texas Catch me if you can A good-hearted woman Might need a good time in May Mr. One Night Stand Chase me around Texas Catch me if you can I thought you were a long time gone Then I saw you on the phone Sitting at the back of the bar With all your friends So I thought I'd take One more chance And ask you for One more dance And you said Hey cowboy Just bring it on Time man Don't tell me you love me Mr. One Night Stand Chase me around Texas Catch me if you can
good-hearted woman might need a good time of man. Catch me if you can. Mm, I just love me a cowboy. <laughs> I bet you do. And live from their King Ranch studio, their mobile studio in the middle of a cow pasture in East Texas, we've got Mickey Nelson and Steve Oliver, and that there is country. Billy Bowles even said he wants to play that one right there. That's so right. That's yeah, go for it. right there. Obviously, Nikki, you slowed down enough for him to catch you. <laughs> oh, darn. Did we lose him again? Oh, no. I don't know if that's a good deal of him. My, my goodness. Well, I tell you what, that definitely is country. And, you know, uh, uh, Steve was talking about some of the cuts that he's had over the years with Lori Morgan and Dalian Vincent and T.G. Shepard, Vern Gosden, Vince Gill and others. Uh, one that, that he has here that, that I wanted to make sure that we shared here is one that uh, he did with Rhonda Vincent. And I tell you what, anytime you can get Rhonda Vincent to do a duet with you, uh, you know that thing is, is going to be a smash because she just brings – so much life to every song that, that she's involved in. And she's so gracious uh, for doing uh, duets with artists. Uh, th th there's one here, Kurt, that uh, they, they did uh, using uh, some tracks from Vern Gosden and some old uh, uh, clips. Wow. I'd like to yeah. see that. Well, you're gonna. So here, here it is right now. I'm gonna share this one with you guys right now. This is called Two Below in Tupelo, and you're gonna love it. It gets hot in Mississippi The good old summertime They say that down in Jackson It's up to 99 South of here in Hattiesburg they sure could use some rain Lord knows it's a bitter cold In the state he left me Well, it's too below and too below Ever since she said goodbye Forecast calls for teardrops But it's much too cold to cry When it's too below and too below In the middle of July When she walked out of this old house When her winds came through the door Hey, I fight the chill she left in me Well, as I walk this hardwood floor I lost my Well, 
it's two below and two below in the middle of July. Well, it's two below and two below. Ever since she said goodbye. The forecast calls for teardrops. But it's much too cold to cry. Well, it's two below and two below. In the middle of July. And I don't know if anybody else had goosebumps all throughout that one like I did, but wow. Song of the year right there. I want to tell you guys something. <clears throat> that clip of Burns standing there with that jacket on, that was uh, a TV show we did. I was playing steel guitar with him on that show. And uh, that jacket, he only wore it on that one show. But, uh, you know, I remember doing that show and seeing him, you know, and hearing him coming through those speakers. And, guys, I got to tell you something. There was just no better singer in the world than that guy. But I got to hand it to Steve. He really, Steve Oliver just freaking knocked that out of the park. <laughs> wow. What a great, great. And Nikki, too. They're just great together. I tell you, that's just a great duet right there. That's a song. I, I got chills on me from hearing that. All right. Yeah, I did, too, the whole time. Unbelievable. What do you think about that one, Steve? That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, those two blend well together. And I've never seen a a uh, trio executed like that you know especially when you bring in somebody from the past and you know i mean when it's been done before as a duet but the way they the three of them blended together was just wow. massive. very well done very well uh edited and and uh produced and the whole deal but uh, i think we need to get them kurt into the clarksville creative sound studio man i would love to get them in here uh, I can't think of anything I would rather do than get those guys in the studio and work with them. Um, you know, I worked with Vern for so many years and just, it just brought back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Steve, I was just telling these guys, you're back now with us. And I was just telling them that that video where Vern was wearing that jacket, I was actually playing on that show. That show was called on stage. I was playing steel guitar for Vern uh, during that, that, that show. And it just brought back uh -huh. strong, strong memories of, uh, you know, for five years, guys, 250 dates a year, I sat there playing steel guitar with him on stage and hearing that voice coming through those speakers. I don't mind telling you if that wasn't heaven. And I had the privilege of working with the greatest singers, I think, of all time with George Jones and, and uh, you know, Ray Price. I mean, being on stage with those guys, it was, it was just amazing. But Vern was so sad. You know, he could make you cry. Yeah. I, I used to look out at the audience and just, and the women would just be sobbing when he would sing. And uh, it, I never saw that with any other artist besides Vern Gosden. You guys did an amazing You know, I, I, that's great. You know, but Vern, um, and you know, for yourself, Kurt, you know, a lot, of, a lot of guys say this and that, but he was always great to me. I mean, absolutely. I couldn't ask for no better <laughs> guy you know, to hang out with and, and do, but, but he, he was a very lonesome, yeah. lonesome man. You know, uh, everybody, when you get to that status in a lot of, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, he's stuck up. You can't get a lot of people. You can't get, you can't get to them anyway, you know, because of the status, but Vern, it was like, you know, everybody was, they was like when they come at him the wrong way, boy, he just didn't like, it, you know, and, and I was just his friend. We sat on, you know, we sat on the front porch and eat watermelon. He smoked pot. I didn't smoke, but he did. <laughs> I'm, I can guarantee I'm like, you. Like Clinton. Clinton. I'm, I'm like Bill Clinton. I did not inhale. <laughs> I ate that water. And I'm dead. But anyway. You know. But no, you know. Steve, the time he could be so funny. He was so the guy. Well, we're losing you guys again, but I, I, 
I hate that. Man, I'm enjoying this so much. But I, I got to tell you, you know, Vern, he's right about Vern. Vern, Vern smoked a lot of dope, and uh, he he would wake up, and he would just smoke it all day. And the guy was so paranoid most of the time. But everybody, you know, you just couldn't help but love him. But, yeah, he was always trying to get me to smoke with him, and I wouldn't do drugs. And uh, we were on the bus one time, and he kept on at me and saying, you know, Kirk, we're going to write a great song if you'll just smoke some of this. And uh, he finally talked me into it, and I did it. And the next morning, I woke up still sitting there with my hands around that guitar like that. I fell asleep instantly, and I I didn't move at an inch. I lay I sat there all night and slept on that bus like that. He comes in the next morning and he said, "You're never going to smoke that stuff again. We're not. We can't write anything when you do that." And I, it's just, but Vern, you know those guys, they they did it a lot, man. It's crazy. Well, that, that, that inspired our song, Talking in Your Sleep, right? <laughs> That's exactly right, Steve. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. My goodness. <laughs> good, good job, Brent. Good Thank job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, Brent never misses an opportunity to do that to me ever. I, I didn't even see that coming today, but thank you. You teed it up nicely. <laughs> Oh, I hate that we lost these guys. What a great conversation. I do, gotta too. Got to get them back on here, guys. Yes. Well, I tell you, if we can't talk to them, before we get out of here, I do want to let people know that uh, something else that Steve's involved in is a television show that's called Alabama Shine, which is on country, uh, the Country Music Television or uh, Country Music Network. Um, he is doing a yeoman job with that thing, too. And it's taking off. And I want to share a clip of this thing here uh, so you can get a feel for what it is. It's really neat. In the hills of sweet home Alabama, the cornfields grow and the moonshine flows. It's a way of life that's been passed down from generation to generation to people like Jimbo Bray and Johnny Griffin. Best corn you will ever find. Down here we call it to Alabama shine. Alabama Shine's coming. Alabama Shine. Exclusive on the Country Network. <laughs> you know, our good friend Lance Goodman sh is shooting those videos and that, that TV show, and he's the guy that shoots all of our uh, uh, videos here at Clarksville Creative Sound, and uh, he looks like he works a lot with uh, – Steve Oliver and Nikki as well. What a great videographer, but that's going to be an amazing show right there. Now we're back. Now we're ah. back. We found a studio out here in the middle of this field with a guitar behind it. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> well, we were just talking about Alabama Shine. I was trying to give a promotion for that just in case uh, we didn't get a chance to talk to you here. But uh, if you can hear us, tell us a bit about how that came together. Well, what I did, I, we were... I was telling you the other day, Steve, when we had our meeting, I, we were down, um, uh, well, starting starting up that, what happened was three or four years ago, I, uh, you know, as my voice, very traditional or kind of outlaw music, I can do that. You know, anything other than that, I'm just, I'm just, that's just not me. So, you know, and so I do the best I can do, whatever, you know, what I can do with far as that end but i started writing some outlaw song kind of stuff real wailing outlaw kind of stuff and some of it turned into moonshine kind of stuff and i wrote a song called moonshine man well from that it just went on and started i just i was gonna write an outlaw album that's what i was doing so uh we were doing a, a songwriting festival down in gulf shores alabama called the Frank Brown Songwriting Festival. Been, uh, it's been, I think this is the 38th year of it. Hank Cochran, Red Lane, all those guys started that back in the day with a guy named Joe Gilchrist, who owns a, who owned the Floribama at the time. So anyway, it's been that tradition, you know, all hit writers and songwriters and stuff were invited to go. They invite you. So anyway, I was invited to go. Me and Nikki went. We was getting ready to go on stage. This guy walked up and said, hey, I love y'all's music. Would y'all be interested in coming to Texas to do uh, my barbecue for me? It's about 500 uh, employees I have. We said, sure. So we got back to Nashville, pulled the card out, 
And uh, the guy actually uh, is the uh, CEO of Texas Security he's Bank. He's the CEO of Texas Security Bank there in Dallas. You probably know the, the bank. But anyway, uh, me and him become good friends. We've come out, done shows for him around Dallas, Fort Worth, and, uh, and everything. So then uh, me and him opened up a publishing company together called Oliver Sheaf, and and everything's related to the moonshine and the TV show. We have that partnership on that catalog. So I broke the whole catalog. We cut it. I cut it with all the guys, Brent Mason, them guys, you know them. Uh, Lonnie Wilson on drums, just all those guys. Great, great soundtrack. And what we're doing, we've got Jelly Roll. Um, uh, Nikki's working on Wine On. I got Daryl Worley, got Charlie McCoy, uh, Georgette Jones. I've got all these different art. We got Artemis Powell from Leonard Skinner. He's Neil drum. McCoy. Neil McCoy. So I've got these different artists that uh, that's going to be on this soundtrack. So that's what's how that all went down. The so TV show. and then but the TV show to relate to get us to the TV show was uh, Craig knew the CEO of the country network. He took me over there. And uh, so they brought me to Texas and introduced me to a bunch of CEOs. <laughs> and I wound up with a publishing company and a uh, TV, show, and a on TV show on the country network. And we're doing 10 episodes and. We're shooting them. We got three shot and we're shooting the other seven, getting that done ASAP. That's another reason I was out here. So we're going back and putting all that together and getting ready to shoot all these shows. And that's where we're at with the network. And my moonshine, Alabama Shine, is going to be on the shelves very soon. And that's uh, so we got, you know, we got the Alabama TV show on the network, got the moonshine fixing going all the stores, right by Popcorn Sutton and all them old big boys. That know how to make that moonshine, they uh-huh. but and, the uh, and then the album will be for sale, and you know, in t-shirts, just a, you know, you know how the story goes, just just working it all, and trying to make it all pop at one time. That's what I'm doing. So we're getting all the shows shot and getting the moonshine ready for the shelves, and when we get ready to release it all, we'll be uh, we'll be rocking. But Jenny Row, you know, was our first artist. You can YouTube it. We got close to about 500, half a million views because. You know he's the hottest thing out there right now. Right. And how, uh, how, and how, he, how did you land him for that? Well, Nikki, uh, her son plays guitar for Jenny Rowe, well, so it's that? kind of an in-house little click. There, we I know a girl that knows a boy. There you go. <laughs> she raised. And I made a boy. And she made, <laughs> she made a boy to play for Jenny Rowe. But no, he, it's just a little in-house thing there. That, and we all love Jenny Rowe. He's he's. He, he cannot do what we do, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. But right. he's he a good old boy. He no, he can't do what he does because he's a rapper. You know, he's a white. He started 10 years. Everybody thinks he's overnight success, but Nikki's living proof. Her son went off with a white rapper 10 years ago in the east side of Nashville selling CDs out of the trunk of his car at a truck stop. And here he is today. He just played the Grand Ole Opry night, yeah, a couple nights, two, ago. Couple nights ago and, and sold out shows. So. Hey Steve, anyway, it's, it's, it's Steve. Great. Real quick, I want to tell you, I had uh, I had uh, Wanda Vic and Tommy White uh, in here yesterday, over overdubbing, and uh-huh. both of them played at the Grand Ole Opry, and they were when they came into the studio, they were talking about Jelly Roll, and, right. uh, and uh, I asked, I told them, I said, well, I, I know some people who are friends with Jelly Roll, you know, and I said, uh, tell me about him. I said, you know, and and Tommy said he absolutely had that audience in the palm of his hand. Oh, you know, and so boy, what a compliment! You know, Tommy Watts, the uh, still guitar player on the Grand Ole Opry, and uh, but he was praising Jelly Roll. Now they had another guy on there. I don't know who he was, but but I don't think he he was uh, he didn't mesmerize the crowd like Jelly Roll did. Well, you know, I went. We were down on the Gulf Coast playing down there in Biloxi. We had a few dates down there, and Jelly Roll were coming to town to play the arena there, right right on the ocean, and. It holds 10,000 people and as the first concert, and that was back last year, I went to go see him. First concert and it holds 10,000, it was sold out. And when he sung the song, Save Me, all the lights went out and flashlights come on. Wow. Him and I'm like, this this is it, that's the deal. When, when you see 10,000 people light up their lighters and 
flashlights and stuff and saying, save me, man. You you got it going on. You right. know. Yeah. So Come Steve, it, Steve, you've got uh you've got uh George Strait with his Cody Go tequila. You got uh, even Bob Dylan's got his own whiskey out there. So is Jelly Roll gonna have a moonshine brand? Yeah, we're gonna call it Jelly Jam. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. No. Do what I'm what I'm working on uh, is uh, each artist. Uh, maybe we'll run a series of them, a little bit of wine on a wine, or you know, jelly roll jam, or whatever it may be. You know, uh, run a little series with them with this Alabama shine, and then they can give their love to it also as it's as it's on the shelf. You know. Uh, so what's the difference between an Alabama shine and say, for instance, a North Carolina shine? Is there uh, one? The only difference is, you know, it uh, we're up higher. It runs downstream. So we got the best. Alabama <laughs> shine is the best. Uh, <laughs> That's the only difference, man. Well, and they, and Brent, they, they ferment coals for that, that moonshine, I think, or something. What's that now? They ferment cotton bowls for that moonshine. <laughs> That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> it flies. There's two episodes on YouTube that you can watch where you can watch Alabama Shine right now. And, and the show is about moonshine and music. So you can see a little bit about, uh, you know, how it's made and, and different moonshiners on different episodes. So yeah, yeah you every get a little episode, taste of it. Yeah, every episode will have a different moonshiner. And, you know, and not just only in Alabama. I'm, I'm getting moonshiners out of Texas. Anywhere I can go shoot a moonshiner, let him be a part of the show. And then that just brings different. You know, yeah. different moonshiners, different parts. Just give everybody a little of it, you know? Right. Well, you right. know what? I think I'm going to start making some moonshine here. Maybe you can come up here to Clarksville. They will lock you up in Clarksville. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's right. Uh, <laughs> All I can send you is a harmonica to the jail. Uh, <laughs> uh, we can moonshine toilet tea or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, you know, everybody, you know, it, a lot of people, you, you would – you wouldn't believe at the calls I get people wanting to make moonshine I believe. It, because everybody and their brother in their garage is doing it. But, you know, I want to get out in the woods a little deeper before it really happens. And, yeah. uh, you know, the first old boy, the first episode, uh, Jimbo Bray and Johnny Griffiths, they won the master's distillery on the regular moonshine TV show. That's why I had them on my first episode. But I told him, I said, soon as this goes out, because they make, the real moonshine that are, you know, on the creek banks. And I said, look, as soon as this goes out, y'all better, y'all better leave it alone illegally, leave it alone, you know? And Johnny went right on. And I reckon they, but last time we seen, he, he was, had an orange suit on, uh, yeah. headed head to the jailhouse because he wouldn't quit making whiskey, I guess. So hadn't talked to him since then. But, uh, but, 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 you know, you gotta, you gotta, it's real careful. So we're, we're doing everything legally now as we can because you know it's just one of those things nobody wants to go to jail well in all honesty you got to know what you're doing there i mean there's all kinds of stories get go back to the prohibition days where these guys were making that moonshine out in the 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 uh the backwoods and a lot of that stuff was literally poison it could kill people oh yeah they run it through old car radiators and all that stuff but but you know the the right way to do it is, of course, with the, you know, with the uh, copper steels and copper lines and, and, but, you know, I, now, as far as me, I, I wouldn't go out here and make none and, and give it to somebody. No way would I do that because I'm afraid it might poison somebody. But as long as you got the, you know, the government getting their money and their, their guys come and say it's okay, then you're okay to do that, you know. So uh, that's the only, only way that, Alabama shine would be, you know, technically right available to it had to run that way, you know. My grandfather made moonshine in Oklahoma, in Broken Bow, Oklahoma, when I was a little kid. And I remember sticking my head in that thing and I was woozy for about 15 <laughs> minutes just yeah. smelling it. See, it was nasty stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even in that movie, Walking Tall, the actual real movie you know with Buford Bu Bu Pusser yeah. if you watch the movie you know when why he was trying to break all them steels and stuff 
down there around the Mississippi and Alabama and Tennessee. It was one just right there on the Tennessee River, you know, in McNary County, Tennessee there that he was busting all them steels. But but he was doing it, you know, not – he loved them guys that made the whiskey, but at the same time they were doing it illegally and and killing people because, yeah, people fun, yeah. you know. And it tells that in that movie, so – that's uh, but but it it happened a lot back in them days, you know. Yeah. Sure, would some bad whiskey key, you know. Right. Did you know? Did you know, uh, Steve, that uh, Bern Gosden hired Buford Pusser to be his body or not bodyguard, but his bouncer in a club that he owned in Chicago. I sure did. Yeah. I knew the story. Bern yeah. gave me pictures of that and uh, and told me that. And uh, it's pretty interesting to see Vern Gosden and Buford Pusser standing together. Of course, Buford was like six foot five and, you know, but yeah, he was a bouncer in a nightclub back in those days. Crazy. I'd like to have him if I was going to have anybody. Yes, sir. Yeah, it would have. Yeah. Well, I'm curious. I'm curious. Go ahead. Well, I'm I'm just fixing. I was just going to say, you know, nice meeting all y'all and Kurt. I'm. I can't wait to get up to the studio there and uh, let's throw around some songs and maybe cut a hit or two, you know? I would love that, uh, Steve. I think it'd be great if we could. I'd love to get you guys. You know, we're, we're actually, I know you and, and Steve Marker have been in some meetings, and uh, I'm hoping that we can uh, we can come together and work together. I, I know we can, and uh, I've, I've sang your praises to Steve, and, uh, I know what a good guy you are, and and so you know I'm really hoping that we can get together and do some stuff together, and and uh, I think it'll benefit everybody. Yeah, we talked. Me and Steve had a talk yesterday about it a couple of days, last couple of days, and uh, kind of getting everybody's view on it and stuff. And I think between all our heads, we could make a lot of it, make a lot of it work for everybody. You know. Okay. Well, I think. By the way, you got the prettiest bus I've ever been in. Thank you. Oh, I love the tour bus love that thing i love it yeah I, it's just uh you know as old uh you have to be careful out there on the road you know it gets about a dollar a mile it's what it costs <laughs> you know? yeah. not a bad time in history to be driving a bus is it <laughs> well yeah, we got the money neither right you know you yeah. gotta have a little fine fun with it we, we, enjoy it we do enjoy it when we get to go on it and um and you know the gigs pay the gig pays the gas bill, right? So yeah, but but yeah, I really love it. Yeah, we was me and Steve was talking about it yesterday. I can't wait to get it out here in Texas and do some things with it up and down the road. Yeah. Be fun. Yeah. Well, well we, we put that bus to work, and, and we talked a lot about what you guys are into with the Country Network and your Moonshine Show and other ideas, and so. Um, I would tell the viewers to stay tuned because we're working on some things and hopefully they'll come to fruition where we can work together on some of these tours that we're doing and it'll all tie in. Some of it will tie in with the 66 thing that we're doing. Uh, so it looks like the stars are, are kind of aligning. Um, timing is good, you know, and I, I, I attribute that to the man upstairs. You know, it's, it's funny how all that works if we just let him do his thing and not not push our our timing and wait wait for his timing and so it seems like uh, all these things are coming together but we'll we're continuing to to have discussions along those lines and and uh uh we uh, our goal like i've said all along at clarksville creative sound is just to get our music out to as many people as we can and spread some joy and man if we can do it and and, and have that tour bus and have you guys involved in that and and yeah. brought thing through your network i mean the more the merrier right yeah that'd be great we can do that uh got just you know like i said earlier when you can when i got out there on my front porch and kirk's been there you can do some thinking and and i really like i like my way of thinking now you know and and and, and this it and, and it says for everybody you know uh when you, when you can do your own thing and you believe in your own thing and nobody else is, it's hard to get somebody to believe you, you know, what you, what your dream is, no matter what it is. But, but when you get a group of guys together that all get it and understand it, then, then you hang it on the wall. That's when it all happens, you know, but going back to that, and uh, I know Kirk played that song a million times, but remember that song burned on take me home to Alabama talking about the stars and all that falling in place. 
that made me think of that in there. It's kind of funny how that comes back around. I know Kurt played that song a zillion times with Burns. Yeah. Mac Vickery wrote it. And, uh, but you know, it. when when I was with Burns, uh, we were on the road. Uh, you know, we had Dean Dillon and Hank Cochran and Max T. Barnes on the bus with us on every tour. Can you imagine oh. what the what that was like being on the road with all those guys? Yeah. And I got to ride on the bus with Burn and those guys because we were writing songs and uh, yeah. wow, what a I learned so much from those guys, man. You know, uh, it, it's funny, it, and we could we could actually live that dream, Kurt, uh, for those guys. But you remember Red Lane? Oh yeah, Red wrote "Take Me." Uh, he wrote that uh, uh, Tammy Wynette till I get it right. He wrote. Uh, um, Oh, that big George Strait uh, hit. Uh, it was later. Tell me something bad about Tulsa. He yeah. wrote George Strait and Miss Emily's picture for uh, 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 for John Conley, and then um, new looks from an old lover again. He just had hit after hit after hit, you know. But uh, but his dream was now he lived in Ashland City, not far from you on a DC-8 airplane that he bought in the 80s from out there in Lebanon, Tennessee, at the airport, moved it up there, made a home out of it. And But his dream was, I always, I stayed up there many nights writing songs and stuff with him, but his dream was to get on a bus and follow Merle Haggard around because he holds the record of Merle Haggard cuts, not hits, but cuts, co-writes with Merle. And he said, what I'd like to do, get on that bus and pull up Wherever Merle's at, we'll just pull up beside him. But, you know, he didn't live long enough to get that cancer got him. And Hank Cochran got him, too, and right there together. But that was them boys' dreams. They done done everything else, but they was just wanting to ride around and pull up beside them old boys and have fun, you know? Yeah. And, but we could get on my bus, Kurt, and still do that with some of these guys. Yeah, we can. We now, will, too. Uh, you know, they're not coming to our front door to cut our songs. If you don't get out here with them, I'm like Hank Cochran. I'm I'm waiting on Jelly Row to cut one of my songs. I'm going to Hank Cochran because I'm going to move in with him. I know where he lives. I'm going to take my suitcase like Hank Cochran done Willie Nelson. He Willie said, "What are you doing here?" And he said, "I'm I, I'm moving in with you till we get this song cut." They wound up and wrote an album, you know, the Redhead Stranger album. So that's what I'm fixing to do with all these artists with my bus. Just get out there and move in with them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hank was quite a character. I will tell you, Steve and myself, Steve Markwood, myself, and uh, uh, another co-writer, uh, John Castleberry, who uh, who toured with Bob Dylan and Paul McCartney, and we're going up in the Smoky Mountains in about 10 days, and we're going to do a songwriter's retreat. we got a cabin up there, and we're just going to write songs for a week. So I thought about you, and I thought, boy, if we could get him up there with us, but, uh, you know, I think uh, this is something we ought to think about in the future. Uh, I think bringing this guy in, Steve Mark, or bringing in uh, Steve Oliver would be a fun songwriter's retreat. I think we need to do that. Yeah, you ought to join us up there. It'd be a You're lot of fun. You're welcome, yeah. Let's do it. I'll bring the baloney, man. <laughs> yeah. Bring the moonshine. That's what we want, right? We need we're gonna need we're gonna need Nikki up there because Lord knows we need adult supervision. Ain't that the uh, truth? He can she can fry some bacon too. <laughs> you know, we need we need and I'll bring the whiskey. We got it. I'll tell you what we ought to do. We ought to go up there and just write songs for Highway 101 and then get them in the studio and record them. Yeah. We can do that. Plan, That's what we ought to do. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. That'd be great for all of us to come together. That'd be a then we'd have a few more episodes of your road stories in the can, uh, Kurt. So yeah. that's right. That's exactly right. We'll do that. That'd be great. Excellent. Well, I tell you what, uh, we we've been at it for a while here. Uh, if people want to follow your career and find your music, where do they go to do all that? They can find us at Nikki Nelson and SteveOliver dot com. Make sure you go check that out here. Get on that website and. And follow along here is is it sounds like they're going to be busy here over the next couple of years. And I, real, really quick, whenever the when does this TV show come out, uh, Steve? Well, what we're we done a little teaser with Jaylee Row on it, and then we done another one. But I'm just we're getting everything in the can, uh, like I said. And uh, I, what I want to do is run my TV show. 
because of commercials. I own the commercial spots also. So it'd be like the RFD channels. You know, you can put whatever you want to in that commercial. So I want to be able, when I take off, I want to have everything in place. And the only thing I'm liking is my whiskey. And uh, then I'll be able to sell whiskey where they can go get it. Then my T-shirts, the CDs, the soundtrack, you know, the whole soundtrack and the TV show. So I'm just, that's the only hold up. But actually, if I had all that done, I could actually, you know, we could start showing tomorrow if I wanted to. And that's going to be on what network? It is on the Country Network. The Country Network, okay. Yeah. And it's streaming on all platforms. It streams on all platforms. Uh, I think Fort Worth, Steve, I think uh, the Country Network has its own little hometown station there, whatever that may be. You can check into that. We'll have to we'll have to check into that, and you know we'll we'll do what we can to help you get that off the ground because that's an intriguing and, and interesting project, and I think it lends itself obviously to 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 putting some good old real country music out there as well. You know, uh, we're always looking for I use this word maybe too much, but we're always looking for a Trojan horse to carry that music out there. You know, and uh, and uh, and as, as creatively as possible, and this is just another way that I see that uh, we might be able to do that. So uh, we're, we're, we're definitely anxious to work with you on that. Whatever other ideas we might be able to come up with to get our, our music out there to as many people as possible. Well, the great thing about it, you know, uh, you can do a 10, I've got 10 song album. A lot of people do 12. So there's a couple more slots open. If we, if y'all had somebody on y'all's team, if we wanted to go that route also, but at the same time, whatever it is, 10 or 12, whatever we decide to do, we, we got 10 or 12 different artists. That's better than one artist trying to do it. We got a lot of angles to go at, and that's why I'm, I'm going all across the board from Leonard Skinner, you know, to uh, uh, Georgette Jones, which is Tammy Wynette and George Jones is on the cover. You know, Nikki, we've got one with Nikki. I've got one with myself. And then we've got these, you know, uh, with the, with the, why Nona? We don't have her yet. There's nothing in stone, but you know how Kurt how it is with everything with her mother went down, and she actually done. It's just hard to get to these artists sometimes. But well, you got a you got a good one with Georgette. She and I've written songs together, and I, we're we're pretty good friends. And I'm telling you, that girl can sing. She's she incredible. The studio and sung. One me and Nikki was there. I I sent her the track. She came in and nailed it. I mean, one take. It yep. sounds just like her mother on this. I know it. I know. Yeah, I've recorded her, and it's incredible. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, Kurt. Uh, two artists that come to mind that would be great uh, fit for that show would be Terry Lamaster and Darren Wright. <laughs> well, Darren Wright especially uh, because he's a uh, he's get the most outlaw guy that I've seen. But I will tell you, I've got a 16 year old girl here that we, her name is Evie May, and we just recorded a song, and she is outlaw as she can be that's her right there and uh that girl we've got a, a an original song on her album that's all about moonshine and everything i'd love to play it for you at some point. yeah that'd be great yeah, yeah play it. it when we come up you can play it for me well yeah. if y'all come to the smokies um in a few in a few days uh she'll be up there as well partaking in some of that songwriting stuff with us so yeah, yeah. what days are y'all going up there uh, we're leaving on the 15th, and we'll be back, I think, the 21st, something like that. That'll work good for me because I'll be back. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'll be back. Uh, I'll be out of pocket for a few days, but I, that might work for me. Well, wow. think about that. Well, you're welcome to go with us. We'll talk about that. And uh, but I think we probably need to wind this one up, Brent. Don't you think? It's probably about that time here, but I'm just enjoying the conversation. So, and it was so uh, nice to meet you. You didn't say much, but we didn't let you. <laughs> That's all right. I've used up enough words for this week, but hey, thank you guys so much for coming on. We really thank appreciate you. it and, and look forward to having you back on uh, when we have a full show's worth of internet signal. Right. Yeah. That's great. Uh, that's great talk. stuff and we want to thank everybody else for taking the time to join us here today i uh, appreciate you hanging through the technical issues here and uh, hopefully we'll get all those things sorted out here so we can get you a good show here next week uh, tell us a little bit steve about what we got going on for next friday well next friday we got a real special guest uh our good friend uh western swing artist extraordinaire uh billy mata 
who just put out a new album called Timeless Treasures, and it is fantastic. You know, he's Billy's a crooner like me, so he loves to do some of the old standards and, and mix that stuff in. And so Billy's going to come on and talk, you know, and Billy is one of those guys that works. I mean, he plays probably three or four gigs a week easily. He's out there just about every time I look up, he's doing another gig. And uh, and so he's a treasure uh, himself and, and good friend, gracious guy. Uh, and he's a fan fan of ours too, which we're flattered about. So mutual worship there. And uh, so we're gonna have Billy on talk about you know where he's been and where he's he's heading with his and and talk about his new album and play hopefully a few cuts from that. We'll see if we got any videos to show. But uh, looking forward to Billy Mata being on our show next Friday. Excellent. And if you like any of the stories here that you heard from Mr. Kurt Ryle, I hope you guys will join us every other Monday. Uh, next uh, opportunity will be Monday, July 10th at 8 p.m. Central for Kurt Ryle's Road Stories, or where we get into pulling behind the uh, curtain here, some of the uh, legendary artists that Kurt has worked with here. And, and that's always a fun one, Kurt. Yeah, we enjoy that. And uh, last week we had uh, we, we had our young uh, uh, guest on here, uh, Evie was here in the studio recording, so we had her on. But, uh, yeah, I like to get out there and tell funny stories. <clears throat> you need to tune into that, uh, Steve, because uh, I tell a lot of stuff on Byrne and Mel Tillis and some of those guys that nobody ever, nobody's ever heard about. And some of those stories are pretty funny. I think you'll enjoy that. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Can't wait to hear some of that. That'd be fun. So, again, uh, uh, 8 p.m. Central on July 10th will be the next opportunity. In the meantime, I hope everybody will get plugged in to the Fort Worth Musical Moments Facebook group, the Clarksville Creative Sound Facebook group, and the Real Strong Media Facebook page so you know everything we've got going on here. We've got a lot of moving pieces right now and a lot of great content we're putting out. Also want to invite you to check out Rural Strong Radio, which is our 24-7 streaming radio station Found at RuralStrongMedia.com or on the Live 365 streaming radio app. It plays the best in traditional country music, western swing, and bluegrass with a little southern rock and inspirational as well. We're going to get some uh, Nikki and Steve on there as well because uh, that music needs to be heard, and it's phenomenal. So make sure you check that out. Again, RuralStrongMedia.com or on the Live 365 streaming radio app. And as we like to remind you, a couple programming notes on Sundays at 9 a.m. Central, we feature two great programs coming out of Texas. First, from Vidor, Texas, to the world, it's Robbie Lynn with Sunday's Kind of Country. And Robbie plays about three hours of great inspirational country music from everybody from uh, George Jones and Johnny Cash on up to some of today's great uh, independent artists. And it's a great way to fill your soul and get the week started. Then I come in about 11.40, 11.45-ish uh, Central Time for a 15-minute short set of inspirational songs that leads you to the top of the hour, uh, noon Central, when our friend Billy Bowles comes in with Billy Bowles' Swinging Country emanating from the uh, KSSL FM studios in the Lubbock, Texas area. Two great hours of traditional country music and Western Swing. Uh, so make sure you go check out Sunday's kind of country at 9 a.m. Central and stick around for Billy Bowles swinging country. Well, I tell you what, it's time for us to get on out of here. Again, we want to say a special thank you to our special guests, Nikki Nelson and Steve Oliver for joining us here. And we hope you'll join us again next Friday at 10 a.m. Central for Fort Worth Musical Moments when we welcome in Western swing great Billy Mata. Uh, this show automatically archives. If you missed any of it, make sure you catch it on demand immediately following the stream. I hope everybody out there has a great 4th of July holiday, and we will see you again next week for another Fort Worth Musical Moments. Have a great week, everybody. Yes. You've been watching Bye. Fort Worth Musical Moments, a production of Rural Strong Media and Clarksville Creative Sound, copyright 2023. Please join the Fort Worth Musical Moments Facebook group and join us each Friday at 10 a.m. Central as we introduce you to another key figure in Fort Worth's musical heritage.